Hi, my name is Ritu Rana. I'm public health nutritionist and assistant professor at Indian Institute of Public Health, Gandhinagar. In this short video, I'm going to discuss the evidence on association between vitamin D and COVID-19 and its implications for Indian population. Firstly, let us look at what we already knew before COVID-19. So vitamin D is known to play an important role in bone metabolism through regulation of calcium and phosphate and may also play an important role in immune system regulation. In 2017, a review on vitamin D supplementation to prevent acute respiratory tract infections was published. The results showed vitamin B supplementation reduced the risk of acute respiratory tract infection among all participants ranging from 0 to 95 years. Results also suggest compared to those who received one or more large doses, those who received daily or weekly small doses experienced more benefits. Similarly, compared to those with sufficient vitamin D levels in blood, those who had low levels experienced most benefits. Now recently, a pilot randomized control trial from Spain was published which demonstrated that administration of vitamin D may improve clinical outcomes of hospitalized COVID-19 patients. The study also suggests that it is unknown whether the same results would be applicable to non-hospitalized patients and whether baseline vitamin D levels modify this finding. Although the body of evidence is still emerging, evidence before COVID-19 and initial evidence during COVID-19 both are indicative of the protective role of vitamin D on acute respiratory illnesses. Now the next question is what is the status of Indian population? Are we sufficient or deficient in vitamin D? Daily recommended nutrient intake for vitamin D is 200 international unit for all age groups except elderly where the requirements are little higher uh, somewhere between 400 to 600 international unit. The serum levels of vitamin D below 20 nanogram per ml are considered as deficiency between 21 to 29 are considered as insufficiency and 30 and above are considered as sufficiency. A 2018 review from Ames New Delhi showed vitamin D deficiency is widespread in India. The prevalence in this study where authors combined the results of 34 primary studies ranged from 40 to 99 percent and vitamin D deficiency was identified in both rural as well as urban population. Lastly, let us look at three simple public health measures to ensure adequate vitamin D status for Indian population. Number one is increased exposure to natural source that is sunlight. Number two is preventive measure that is consumption of vitamin D fortified foods such as fortified milk, fortified edible oil. These fortified foods will take care of one third of your dietary needs. The third is treatment measure that is consumption of vitamin D supplements. However, you must consult the physician before consuming supplements as high doses of vitamin D are associated with adverse events. We hope the evidence provided in this video was helpful. Thank you.